Dr. Swashla, Scientific Director with Ziva Fertility Centers. Let's try to understand what we mean by sperm morphology and what is it that we are specifically looking at when we are analyzing sperms. So when we do a semen analysis, there are a lot of parameters that we look at. We look at physical characteristics, we look at microscopic and macroscopic issues, we look whether there are any blood cells or pus cells present and uh, within the microscopic parameters, we look at count, motility and morphology. Count is very important because the more the number of sperms, the more the chance that some sperms will reach the egg inside a uterus. And uh, when we talk about motility, it's an extremely important parameter because without motile sperms, pregnancy is almost next to impossible. Now, in a natural condition, when they are motile, they are able to make this journey from the vagina till the tube where the egg is waiting. When we talk about morphology, I have to quote studies where it has been seen and observed and proven that morphology is one of the most important parameters. When it is low, that is when no normal uh, morphology sperms are present, it's very difficult for sperms to reach the egg and fertilize it. To understand a little better, I'll give you an example. If an arrow is not the, the size that is supposed to be, the weight that is supposed to be, the, the sharpness that it's supposed to have, if it does not have those criteria, also a bullet, it cannot reach its target. It, it has to have those specific specifications to be able to perform its function. In the same way, sperm also has a specific shape. It has to it has to look a proper way, it has to uh, be able to move in a proper way. So that's what we're looking at when we're talking about morphology. A normal sperm looks like this. It has a head, you can see this. It has a tail, yes, and it also has a mid piece. If you can see that there is a small mid piece. It is not specifically colored or it is not specifically distributed or distinguished. But I'll just tell you very quickly the importance of each part. The tail helps it move very obvious because with the tail it keeps moving it keeps wriggling like a snake and it moves forward the head has the dna which is required for fertilization all the dna that you have comes half from your mother and half from your father so the paternal side of the dna is packed up inside the head although it's small it is packed up in a very specialized manner the mid piece is another very crucial part where something called as mitochondria and centrioles are. That's the powerhouse. It's like a battery for the sperm which makes it move. The centriole is a very small part but it's very important. It helps and makes sure that fertilization when occurs then uh, next cell divisions also occur simultaneously and it is maintained. So the apparatus of sperm is very critical and we need to select that and assess that very carefully when we are giving you fertility treatments. Let's talk about some abnormalities. So like I said, there are three parts to it, the head, the midpiece and the tail. So we're looking at three defects, three kinds of defects. Does the head have more defects? Does the tail have more defects? Or does the midpiece have more defects? When the head has more defects, we can um, make an assumption that the DNA is not properly packed, which is a very important factor. Uh, we could have uh, embryos out of it. We could have more miscarriages because of that. We could have uh, uh, abnormal uh, children or abnormal embryos per se. The way they look also could not be good because of uh, head defects. The tail defect, obviously, because of that, what happens is that the sperm is not able to travel properly. The midpiece defects, like I said, uh, could be uh, the reason why uh, the embryos are fertilized but they are not able to move on to the next stage of development which we can assess in our IVF laboratories. Let's look very quickly at some head defects. There could be a large head, there could be a small head, there could be an improper packaging of DNA, there could be two heads as you can see here and a lot of shapes which are abnormal. So it's very very critical that we compare uh, the standard normal morphology to the defects that, that are present in the sample. When we look at mid-piece defects, you can see that maybe the head is not attached properly, it's too thick, it has uh, you know some kind of problems at the mid-piece or it has separated into two parts at the mid-piece itself which is also not good. So it's very critical that we look at mid-piece also very uh, carefully. In addition to all this, there could be another problem called acrosomeless. Think of it as something without a hat. The hat is very important for fertilization. When acrosome is not present, fertilization is next to impossible. So it's very critical 
that we assess whether acrosome is present or not and when it is not there different treatment options which are present can be um, suggested to the patient which can help them achieve pregnancy and improve their success rate if you want to understand more if you've had a semen analysis report which has been given to you which has abnormal morphology you want to understand what kind of morphology what is it that we can do to help you get uh, pregnant please feel free to contact us thank you a lot of effort has gone into making this video please like and subscribe us thank you